Any last questions? Uh, topic which I was and uh, what is the need to join Lok Sata and uh, support a new, you uh, know, uh, freedom movement? Sunil, there is not one educated Indian. There is not one youngster who has dreams about this country or for this country who does not want a fundamental change in our politics, in our governance, the way our society is structured. Overseas Indians, wherever they live, while they have grown up in India or they are of Indian origin, they are exposed to the West or to the Gulf countries or other countries. They understand how systems could be different, how results can be achieved. All human life is about learning the lessons from others' experience. We don't have to go through the same pain to learn the lessons. If Britain or America or Finland or Sweden, if they can build systems that work better with the same resources and technology, why can't we? So really, Lok Sattva's effort is to try and bring about the change required in the country based on our own past experience and the experience of the rest of the world. Overseas Indians, they have immense exposure to what's happening in the rest of the world. They know what is possible. They know status quo, the way things are happening in India, is not desirable, it's not sustainable. We must change things. And change will not happen of its own accord. Miracles must happen, but they will not happen of their own accord. We must make them happen. Lok Sattva is merely a platform for all of us whether we live in India or abroad, people who dream of a better India, dream of better politics, dream of better governance, dream of a corruptory India, dream of a country in which every single child can fulfill her true potential, a country in which every family gets the opportunity to avoid all avoidable suffering. And that means good quality health care and a whole lot of systems to make our life better. And of course, as I said before, it's about eliminating corruption as much as is humanly possible. And therefore, overseas Indians are very well placed to play an important role in this. First, they have access to technology. And in today's world, technology makes it easier for us to communicate without spending too much money. In many ways, we live now in a flat world. Second, they are exposed to the West or to the rest of the world as well as to India and therefore they understand the need for transformation. They also understand the possibilities that what we are dreaming is not something impossible. It is something sensible, practical. It can be easily accomplished. Third, there is a lot of young energy, entrepreneurial energy, dynamism. Most of the overseas Indians are young people who want to see changes in India. That must be harnessed. So in order to harness this energy, overseas Indians must and can do many, many things. One, be a powerhouse of ideas, how we can translate some of the great practices and experiences of the rest of the world into India and make it our work in this country. Second, organize and build leadership because many overseas Indians, they have one foot in India, one foot elsewhere. As they say, you can take an Indian out of India, but we cannot take India out of an Indian. So we are Indian wherever we are. And therefore you can provide the leadership and the organizational muscle. And you can provide the resources. There is a membership structure available to overseas Indians just as it's available to the people in India. And they can be executive members, they can be life members, they can be supporters, and they can be, play a creative role. And all the members of Lok Sattva, wherever they live, they have representation in Lok Sattva's decision making. And in the working committee, we are providing a significant number of members from the overseas members. This is really about the second freedom struggle. This is about transformation of India. This is about making sure that every single child gets a chance to have decent education and proper health care, to fulfill her true potential. This is about eliminating corruption and transforming India and ensuring that we get the kind of economic growth that we deserve as a country and that our people get the opportunity that they deserve as a people. And it is everybody's business. All that we do here 
is to merely build a platform for all of us to participate together and transform the country. And that's why there are many roles to be performed by overseas Indians. And Lok Sattva is the platform for you. And the time is right. And together we will and we should transform this country quickly. Society. One is uh, the very well educated intellectual group. Other one is uh, the people who live in the Basti who are more than 50% of the population. They earn less than 15,000 per annum and uh, they you know, live at the very uh, dirty you know, uh, places, uh, sometimes on the drainages and all. <coughs> in very dirty slums, uh, they, you know, they, they live and uh, they don't even get their uh, old age pensions, uh, they don't get any kind of uh, you know, the, the aid from the government. And uh, the government even doesn't take care of, uh, you, know, uh, of you know, identifying people who are really uh, to be benefited. So, how do you think NRIs uh, can play a role in you know, really making this kind of this existing politics go and reach the people living in the bus season? Or? It's a very good question. First, we must understand how big change take pl takes place in any society. In a free society, in a democratic society, peaceful change takes place only when three groups come together and fight hard. The first is the middle classes. The educated, the enlightened, the knowledgeable middle classes who are hungry for a better India. That's exactly what happened during freedom struggle. The educated Indians, the skilled Indians, the wealth creating Indians, the capable Indians, the people who can provide leadership, they all got together and decided that they should be part of the struggle to liberate this country. And we got some of the finest leadership that the world had ever seen in any country. The second group that is required is the media. Unless the media understands what kind of change is required and unless the media mobilizes public opinion, we cannot make this happen. The third is the elites with leadership qualities, the people who have the capacity not merely to sacrifice and to contribute but also to lead because leadership is a very rare virtue. It's a rare quality that needs to be nurtured, that needs to be utilized fully by any society. And therefore, it's but natural that any major movement for transformation actually starts with the educated and the enlightened people, the young people, the middle classes, the women, and the many people who really want to see changes in India and who have the capacity to conceive them and to work for them and to give a bit of their time, energy and resources. Now, unless these people come forward to join the second freedom struggle, just because we have some good ideas, big change will not happen. The second is, it's a fallacy to think that the poor in this country, those in villages in rural India, or those in towns, the urban poor, it's a fallacy to think that these people do not want change. In fact, they need this change even more than the rest of Indians do, because those who are rich, who are educated, who are influential, they can somehow get things done. It's the poor and the weak that actually require fundamental change. But the problem is, the poor and the weak, they are also oppressed by the state. They are dependent on the state for a variety of things on a day-to-day -day basis. Without state patronage, they are afraid that they will not get even the little things that they are getting now. For instance, the ration card, a housing program to be a beneficiary in a housing program, a pension, help when unfairly a first information report is registered in the police station, or a hundred other myriad things. And therefore, even when they know that change is required, they despair of any real change. They are desperate for personal survival on a day-to-day -day basis. And they are afraid that if they go against the wishes of the dominant factions in politics in the village, that means the dominant parties and their local branches, then they are worried that they will lose even the few crumbs that they are getting from the government. Therefore, any big change must come from the influential people, the educated people, the enlightened people who are not afraid of the government who understand the values that we are all fighting for. And it's a myth to think that until the poor people and the slum people start voting in big numbers for Lok Sattva, we cannot transform the country. It's not true. What is the vote that Lok Sattva got in the last election? It's only about 2%. We only had have one legislator in place in Andhra Pradesh Assembly. And yet Lok Sattva's impact on public policy and public discourse is profound. If one member and if 2% vote could significantly alter the perceptions and attitudes of those in power, 